Hey, Mark Red Larson here for the Dreamcatcher Podcast. Thanks for joining us. Today, my guest is Amanda Ewers from Minnesota, right? Yep. So how's everything in Minnesota today? Nice and hot. Uh, <laughs> so it gets hot there too then. <laughs> oh yeah, nice and you're outside for just a couple of minutes and you're ready for a shower. It's, yeah. It's, that's... it's not good. Definitely the way it is in Nebraska too. So one thing, we really appreciate nice days. I think probably both places. When it's nice, you really do appreciate that. So um, so um, Amanda, we didn't know each other until recently. I mean, we actually, first time we met was over in Italy on, a, on an amazing trip and um, got to know you there a little bit. So um, Amanda, for our guests, so what is your background? Well, I'm... I'm a teacher by trade. I have been teaching for well over 10 years in multiple modalities Okay. from group fitness to I've been in the classroom and one of my favorite places to be is actually with middle school. So cool. Okay. That's interesting. So middle school. So why is that exactly? Well, I think part of it is I have a middle schooler myself oh. and my, my kids are only about a year apart. Um, okay. And it's a little, a little bit part of my story is, is having, knowing how pivotal that age is and feeling yeah. like, like I can serve in that area. True. And that makes sense. So, um, so are you, did you grow up in that area then? Is that where you're from originally? No, actually, I grew up on the East Coast in oh, North wow. Carolina. Yeah, okay. I spent most of my life there. Uh, my husband was in the Marine Corps, and so we met when he was stationed out in Virginia. And okay, cool. he's from up here, so that's how I got up here. I was just going to ask you how you got there. Okay, <laughs> so he's the one that. So what, um, was that quite a shock the first winter, or did you kind of expect what you got for winter there? I, I question all of my life choices. We'll just say that. <laughs> <laughs> that says it all. Oh, I love it. <laughs> oh, because I imagine I, winters are long enough here, but I can't imagine how much longer they are up there, too. So, oh, oh that's pretty good. So, <laughs> so what does your husband do? Um, Is he he's still an air traffic controller? He's an air traffic controller now. Okay. So, mm -hmm. okay, okay, so. Um, when we were, when we met in Italy recently, um, it was kind of on a, a speaking, you know, get together with other people that are speaking. So how did you ever get into speaking, you, doing any kind of speaking? Well, funny story, actually. I, so I turned 40 this year Okay. and I decided that I was going to do things that I had never done before. And, cool. um, I met, I met Jesse Cruz. He uh -huh. is, yep. um, a professional speaker, event planner and, um, kind of the the person who brought us together. Yep. Well, I he and I met online and we got on a call and he said, yeah, I do these speaking competitions. And I was like, oh, that sounds fun. I've never done one of those before. <laughs> uh -huh. Will you let me, will you let me know when you do one? I want to, I want to try it out. And he's uh -huh. like, sure. So he, sure enough, he called me up and I, I went and I won first place. So I, wow. I took, I took my winnings and uh, got my passport and went to Italy. So I knocked out two things of uh, celebrating yes. my 40th. <laughs> well, you got to celebrate. You got to celebrate everything. I mean, all we have is today, you know, now it's got to celebrate. So, and um, yeah, Italy was a trip. That was a hard trip to come back from. I still, you know, I think about Italy daily. So that was so cool. So um, I know you have some speaking engagements coming up. So what what is coming up? So I will be uh, in Niagara Falls in September um, doing speaking competition number two. Apparently, I can't get enough. So <laughs> I'll be headed <laughs> up to Canada side, uh, Niagara Falls. So I will be doing some international speaking. And uh, so the beautiful thing about these, these competitions is they are about telling your story. And I am okay. what's called a metaphorical storyteller. And... Okay. So that's kind of, that's kind of a uniqueness I didn't know that I had. And uh -huh. um, so I just, I like being in that space and, and being able to shine. So. That is cool. So for the audience, what does that exactly mean? That type of speaker? So it's being able to use examples of, of things that make sense to you. Uh -huh. So if, you know, we've, we've hear these things about, oh, you're carrying baggage. Well, 
okay, you can get this picture in your mind, but what if I said, how about look in your purse and see how many receipts you're still carrying around? Mm -hmm. Check those okay. dates. And then you're thinking, wait a minute. Now that makes sense. Because if we decide we're going to, we're going to empty out and we're going to clear out the baggage. Well, maybe we just get a new purse and a new wallet and we start over instead of carrying around the same old stuff that we don't need. We don't right. need the, the receipt from McDonald's from two months ago. <laughs> exactly. Like that. Yes. It's, yes. And that, that definitely paints a picture. I love that. Mm -hmm. That's so cool. And that makes so much sense. I, mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, I, I'm definitely going to remember that. I definitely I like that a lot. So, um, so um, speaking, I know you said you didn't know, we've talked before, you didn't know if you really would be good at it or, I mean, basically you were unknown what you would feel about it or how good you were. Or, so. Yeah. I remember sitting there and when they were calling up the winners uh -huh. I, I had, I'd been making my list of all the people that I was like, they're going to win this, you know? Uh -huh. And I was making my list. And then the person that I thought was going to take it, they called their name. And then I was like, okay, well then it's gotta be the other person. And then they mm -hmm. called their name and I'm sitting there going, who's left? So when they <laughs> called me, I was, I was literally for a moment I was in shock. And then for a moment I was I like, bet. that's right. Because awesome. I knew I, <laughs> I had walked into that believing in myself and believing that the story I was telling was going to resonate with the audience. And that if I went into there not believing in myself, I wouldn't mm -hmm. show up the way mm -hmm. that I needed to. So Very I true. had to shift the mindset so that when and if I won that competition, that it felt that that was the, that was the right thing. And I celebrated, right. I remember going back to my hotel room and talking to myself in the mirror and uh -huh. claiming it and owning it. Cause I think we forget awesome. to do that. I think so too. I think really we do. So I think that's very important too. So, uh, so if somebody that's listening to watching this wanted mm -hmm. to be a speaker, how would you suggest that they get started in doing a speaking career? Well, apparently I've been doing this for a long time and I okay. didn't realize that. So uh -huh. here's, here's the, what kind of set my, myself apart, not just from being in front of the classroom and teaching all these years, but it was okay. the style of teaching that I was doing and the style of speaking that we were okay. doing. So in group fitness, one of the things that I teach is, uh, athletic yoga. And okay. so we have, I call it the roller coaster where we're kind of, we're going up, 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 and then right. we come down. Okay. Well, if you know anything about literature and storytelling, well, we have, right. We have the plot, right. we have the climax, and then we exactly. have the ending. Right. All of those are pieces of your story. So just like as I'm queuing in a group fitness class, that's how I need to raise the pitch in my story. That's how I need to bring the audience to that peak and okay. be able to seal it up and get them to come back. So depending on the style of speaking that you want to get into, that's going to vary on how you get started, in my opinion. True. True. Yeah. Um, yeah. So if I wanted to go out and do a conference, uh, a business meeting, work with some real estate people and, and educate right. them on, on something that would be maybe a little bit easier for someone who is a teacher or they do True. some sort of training. They're used to being in front of yeah, people. With, uh, right. Right. Yeah. Um, but if you're really good at, at the creative side, that's mm -hmm. storytelling, mm -hmm. being able to bridge the both, that's next level. Okay. Um, okay. Get in. I don't ever want to say start small, you know, or think small, but right in this space, you kind of need to. And Rotary Club, um, churches, any of those sorts of giving places, volunteer, nonprofit right. Right. organizations, because exactly. they don't sure. have a lot of money but they have a, they give right. a lot of value. And so if you right. can bring that to them, 
they're connected, they can find opportunities for you. Oh, yes, definitely. No, that, that, mm-hmm. that's awesome. So, so does your husband, is he interested in speaking or does he, I mean, no. does he have any <laughs> interest in that? <laughs> I take it as no. <laughs> and it's funny that you ask that because there's been conversations that we've had where he said, I just, I'll say, why are you doing this? Because that's not something that you've ever enjoyed doing. And he'll say, I'm just in awe uh-huh. of, of watching what you're doing. And wow. that in a relationship to have your partner to really see you, there's yeah. something really special about that. And it makes you just want to go for it even more. It does. That is so cool. I love that. So um, no, I awesome. So, um, okay. So I have to ask this. This is a dream catcher podcast. What was your dream when you were a child? Hmm. When I was a child, gosh, you know, I think I always wanted the fairy tale life. Not oh, cool. Not like the the glitz and the glamour, but to have a right. home, to have a partner, to have children, and and just to I I wanted to work. Nice. I wanted to have a job, right? And so okay. I just wanted the basic things. I really just wanted to have that wholeness that was really for me nice. what i, I like what i needed mm-hmm. yeah i think that is very deep because i always find that most people don't you know they a lot of times they forget their dreams that they were when they were children so mm-hmm. and that sounds like you caught me and it's like you're you're living your dream right there so um so that most so days cool. it feels that way yeah <laughs> that, and hey that is that's doing better than most people because most people never get their dreams I think I told you that most people are living their fears and not their dreams. So, uh, so that is so cool. So Amanda, have you written a book? I am actually a part of an anthology that will be coming out uh, this fall. Okay. And I, I have my own that will be coming out also this fall. So I've got nice. two books coming out this fall. I'm really excited about. Very cool. I mean, that is so awesome. So, um, and I asked you early before we started a podcast, you said you were thinking about that or it's in the works. I, I have, I have the bones, I call it. I've got, I've got the structure okay. uh, and everything. And I just am looking for just, just to get myself uh, going on it and getting started. So it's, it's there, it's coming. <laughs> okay. Do you have a name for it or uh, do you have a name for your podcast yet? Or is it still in the works? I, that's still in the works. I, I've played around with a couple different things, but I, I just haven't had my heart pulled in any specific direction just yet. So. Okay. And I, and I know what you mean. You'll know when it's right. That's for sure. On yes. that. So, okay. So Amanda, what are some other things you, that you'd like the audience to know that you're up to? So um, recently I have been educating the public on um, postpartum depression there's been a lot of talk okay. about that uh, in the media with the FDA just uh, approving medication for postpartum depression. And that was something okay. that I experienced and multiple okay. times. And so it's part of my story. It's part of why I do what I do. And so I've been going out in and educating groups uh, on, on that so that they know how they can help. Um, what are some of the signs of it? And then also offering some services to those uh, moms who might need that extra support going through that. Okay, nice. That's very nice. So, um, yeah, that's something I've known a few people in, in my life that have gone through that. And that is, um, you know what it's like. It's it's terrible, mm-hmm. that's for sure. Mm-hmm. So, so, okay. Looking five years, ten years into the to the future. So, what does your life look like then? So, my <laughs> husband will be retired by then. So, okay. that's, we um, right now we do have a a small airplane that we we kind of we join the club, and so we get to kind of fly around a little bit. But in five years, I envision that. He will be my pilot taking me 
around to my speaking engagements to where they go. might bring me. Um, and that that's really, I want to travel and mm-hmm. I want that to be okay. something that we do together and that we just experience nice. life so cool. and, and yes, not, amen. not needing to be flashy or any of that, but just to go out, serve and be together. Yep. Be of service I think that is so cool. That is so awesome. I mean, if you can have your own pilot and it's your husband, I mean, that is so that's even yeah. better. That's really good. I love that. So, yeah. okay. So what is something that you um, want to do, but you haven't done yet? Oh, great question. Well, get that podcast up for sure. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> yep. You know Gosh, there's so many things. I did get to go to Italy. That was on my bucket list for sure. Yeah. And I, you know, I want to go to one of those places. What are they called? The uh, infinity pools where they just kind of. Oh, yeah. Yeah. There's no, it looks like there's no edge. I don't, yeah. I don't know. I don't love pools. It's not my thing. You know, when we were in Italy. I don't think I ever got uh-huh. in, but um, uh-huh. I want to, I want to go do one of those. Like, I don't, that's something, they it makes really awesome. silly, yeah. but I want to do that. I've, I've done hikes. I've kind of traveled mm-hmm. a little bit, but I want to do more travel. I really want to yeah, do more travel. Yeah, I agree on that. It is. It's, I, it's the best education there is. So, um, oh, yes. I, plus it just, um, we're at least in Nebraska, we're so sheltered here because everybody is, <laughs> it, it's, it we have lots of corn and cattle and all the other stuff. And a lot of the people, what they think of Nebraska is true. The people are very nice here. Just very um, conservative, very, I, I'll leave it at that. <laughs> so, but, but it's just like, you know, I told them in Italy when we were there, it's like the people, I didn't meet anybody that really wasn't pretty nice, you know, and I had mm-hmm. no problem with the language, but they were all, they had all these fears, you know, that if they mm-hmm. went, you know, they'd have all this. And it's like, no, they're really, it was awesome over there. And it's just, you need to, well, like anything, you know, and you just need to experience it yourself. And um, now I, so, okay. What's another, another country that you would like to travel to? Well, I know we're going, we're planning Iceland. Yep. So yep. are you going? Oh yeah, definitely. Oh, okay. So that's exciting. That, yes. that is one of those things where, you just have to go. And if you get the opportunity to go. Yep. And I never thought I really wanted to travel internationally because there was so much to see in the States. True. Like, that there, is true. There's, I could spend my whole life just traveling the States and seeing all you the could. beautiful things that we have right here. Yep. So I want to do a lot of that. I really want to, I want to accomplish a couple more hikes and, you know, I've never really been the West coast. I've never really got to experience that. Um, Mexico, uh, the rainforest. I want to go. Yeah. I bet that'd be really cool. Tree houses where you get to. Yeah. Oh yeah. I I know exactly what you're talking about. Oh yeah. (laughs) Go go glamping on the North shore. Oh my gosh. Those are just. Yeah. There's so many, I mean, traveling is, I I don't think I, I would love to see if I could get tired of traveling. I don't think I would. So, I mean, it's just, I, 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 people think I already travel a lot. It's like, well, for this area, probably, but not that much for people that travel do. I mean, I, yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I'm ready to get much. my sprint, my sprinter van and just like start the makeover. Like, <laughs> I, I want to live that so life. Right, would you do that? Actually, I've had a couple of friends do that. Would you do that? Really? Hey, I want to, I, I want to try it. Like I, I, I'm, I'm mm-hmm. willing to be open to the idea. And I, I told my husband, I said, I, I don't really want to like, just sell the house. Just let's just get like a camper uh-huh. and just check. I don't think he yep. agrees with me, but. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, some of those are pretty darn nice. It's amazing how nice they can make some of those sprinter vans. I mean, yeah, it's just sure. like, oh my gosh, I could probably do that. Or these small houses, <laughs> these tiny houses. It's like, yes. I told Cheryl, um, my wife, she, that we have way too much stuff. We have way too big a house and too much stuff. And it's just like, you know, I could definitely live that way. Just go, actually, 
you know, be uh, nomadic, you know, just travel nomadic and just digital nomads. That's what I was trying to say. And just mm-hmm. try that lifestyle for a while and leave um, Nebraska for winter. Maybe stay here till Christmas. And then, and then maybe not go back until April or May or something. So um, I, bet, I bet Christmas is really pretty up where you're at, too. I've never been up in your part that time of year. Depends on your definition of pretty. I mean, if you, <laughs> okay. if you want to see snow, white trees, sure. But I mean, right. Right. deciding if you want to risk your life to go open presents at grandma's. I mean, it's, <laughs> oh, what you mean? Yeah. So the freezing drizzle pretty, or freezing rain and the snow blowing stuff. Yeah. yeah, it is. That's, and, pretty you know, I think a, a beach with palm trees. <laughs> it is. I, uh, you know, and I think palm trees and sand would be pretty nice for Christmas, too. I could definitely do that. I, I definitely don't think I would mind that at all. But I tell Cheryl I'm, I'm a frustrated beach bum anyway. So, uh, yeah. so does your husband? I am. Uh, no, I'm always happy where there's sand and, and palm trees. So, oh, yeah. um, so does your husband like the winter weather up there? I guess because we're still here. <laughs> oh gosh! You know, no. my my daughter loves it. My daughter loves it. My my son could probably let it go, but I mean, my daughter she'll go jump in Lake Superior when it's 40 degrees, doesn't care. Oh, and her. my son's always in, you know, sweatshirt and sweatpants. He's like, uh-huh. I just, yeah. So I, th- yeah. I think it is what it is. And I think we yeah. just kind of gotten used it to is. it. Cause... Yep. <laughs> yeah. Well, this is like here. I mean, pretty much, I mean, I've been in Nebraska pretty much my whole life. So you're used to, very rarely having snow that comes straight down. Usually it's vertical. And um, it's, uh, I think of a few years ago, we were almost colder than you. We were down to 32 below here, and, which is really cold for Nebraska, like two years ago. And it's like, why anybody wants to live here is beyond me. I mean, it's just like, I'm ready to get out of here. So um, so talking yeah. about your kids, do they would they like to speak or do they like to speak? Or do they find it interesting what you're doing? Um. My son is my is my cheerleader for sure. Uh, he he's always cool. telling me he's like, "Mom, you're so famous." <laughs> he, he oh, thinks, I love it. You know all all the likes or whatever he you know he's young and they they think all uh-huh. of, all of those ma- um, metrics that they that they have value. You know. Oh yes. Um, right, right. So and he's like, "Oh, I want to be a YouTuber and and all of those things." And my daughter is a she's a quiet leader. Um, she's, she can be, she's really good with younger kids. Um, and, and just having that patience to kind of guide them through activities and things like that. So, uh, I do try to give her those opportunities to, uh, show that leadership and to build those skills. So I don't necessarily think she's, comfortable yet um being in front of a large group of people but she's working on it um my son he doesn't know a stranger so yeah hey (laughs) me too i I can talk to anybody and some people are just like leave me alone you know it's just like get away from me (laughs) so yeah i get that a lot (laughs) so would you okay but hey you know it's like okay i'll move on (laughs) yeah so but would you ever want to do what like Jesse's doing, Jesse Cruz? Would you ever want to do kind of put things events together and do something like he's doing? Oh yeah, I've thought about it even uh, about even having some little things here. I'm gonna test out something in the spring. Um, I do lead okay. a Girl Scout troop, and so I'm gonna lead them through okay. a public speaking badge. And ah, I'm, cool. I'm wonder, I'm, wondering if I don't make that a bigger event than, than just with my troop and actually right. see if I can get some of the older girls to come out and just make something Very fun good. of it. Cause I, why not? And I think it's a win-win because sooner or later in life, you're probably going to do some public speaking and mm-hmm. make it. So it's not got such a stigma, you know, everybody mm-hmm. has that big thing. And it's like, Oh, it's public speaking and including myself, you know, I, I always thought it was such a huge deal. And I think the first time I spoke was the National Day of Prayer 
you know, I did a, a thing up in front for that. And um, I was so worked up, <laughs> I just about couldn't do it. But it's just like, but once you get into it, and it's like, you know, that was kind of fun. It's just yeah. like, that that would be so cool, you know, to, to get people more at ease doing that. And Because mm -hmm. um, I know they had and a terrible time finding people to do that. And maybe if you get them used to that, maybe they'd be more likely to do stuff like that. So you were going to say something. Well, in the the end of the school year, I know seventh grade is usually part of the curriculum is when they start doing. Um, oh, really? Okay. Like little little speeches and getting them into that process. And so I okay. thought, well, why don't I do this at a certain time of the year where they can be prepared for that? So that when they're right, having to do it right. at school in front of their class, that they've at least tasted it a little bit. And oh, yeah. I think excellent. I remember avoiding it like the plague. And oh, me too. You know, I'll take the 7 a.m. Saturday class for community college. Well, so did 30 other people because they were <laughs> just as scared as I was. So it uh -huh. ended up being the biggest class. Oh, okay. It's amazing how people think alike, especially in certain like that. Yes. Uh, but it is, so, it seems like in general, it is a, it's a definitely a fear most people seem to have. So, mm -hmm. um, so you how did you that do that? Go ahead. It's one, it's one of the top fears. It's, wow. I didn't realize that. One, yeah. It's one of the, it's all, it's like up there with, dying. I don't remember like where I want to say it's number one, because I talked about this last year, but people are afraid of speaking in front of others and we're we're this conditioned society where we can get on and we can do podcasts we can do youtube videos we can do right. selfies we can yep, yep, do yep. these lives and there are still people that can't get in front of a room and share their story and i'm yeah i just really want to get into that more of why are is there a fear of what people think is there a fear of you know just putting it out there like what is that fear that people are right. holding on to it does make you wonder what imagine there's some different reasons but yeah it would be would it would be a common reason so um mm -hmm. i would probably guess probably me is being judged you know it's just like and it's just like why why do i care you know you, i mean you need to care that you're putting out a you know when you're speaking but um but why do we put such emphasis on what the, the audience I don't know. As, well, I think as a as a nation, as a group, that we're we don't want to fail. And I don't know if you think you're going to fail by doing it, or I mean, what do you think on it? What are your opinions on why we fear that so much? It's vulnerability. Yeah, and I think I think vulnerability is hard. I would, and, I would agree with that. You know, again, going back to de depending on what you're talking about, if you're sharing your story, that's vulnerable. If you're yeah. sharing something that you're knowledgeable about, that's confidence. So, but, mm. but don't they intertwine together? Vulnerability and confidence, don't they intertwine together mm. at some point and some level? Yep. No, I agree. No, and, and, and I found that because actually, I don't know, I, I collect vintage Christmas stuff and you can actually, I have a kind of a sickness. That's what Cheryl calls it. And I had a, a group actually that wanted me to speak on it and they wanted me to do 20 minutes well they did an hour and a half and it's just like why didn't you guys tell me to be quiet it was just but i was confident i was passionate you know it just didn't even went by in the blink of an eye and they said oh we were enjoying it it's like well i'm glad you're enjoying it but that's i missed 20 minute mark by quite a bit so um but yeah i think you're right on that you know the confidence and because i have <laughs> i've collected Vintage Christmas since I was a little kid. My grandparents mm -hmm. got me started on that. So it's something I know very, very well. And um, that's interesting. It's definitely something interesting. So, and um, and that's probably when I did the National Day of Prayer because I was not confident on that day. <laughs> so it was just, I was just basically reading it up, up out of the Bible. So, um, so that's cool. Um, so um, your book, you said you're writing your book. What is your book about? So I am writing about or taking people through a journey of goal setting, okay. uh, of really mastering okay. what that means to set goals 
realistic goals for yourself because no okay. matter where you are in your life, what you're trying to work towards, first of all, we should all be working towards something in our life, but right. Amen. Yes. Th but there's a process there. There's a process that starts inside. There's a process of the self-care pieces that have to go in line with getting to your goal. And so I'm using the okay. principles of archery to help people. Okay. Yeah. To really bring this into focus because if you know anything about archery, archery requires it's over 90% a mental practice. It's, wow. It's, okay. I did not realize that. Yeah. And so there's, there's so many pieces of, of getting your bow and arrow set to hit the bullseye and people practice this for years to become masters in the practice. Right, right. But there's a Zen element that happens okay. to master it, to truly hit the bullseye. And when we're going through this journey of trying to accomplish our goals, I think we, we don't honor those small wins, like sitting in front True. of the mirror with my trophy and owning it. Right. We just right. are onto the next thing. Exactly. Or, um, celebrating the, the fails that happen because the fails are there to teach us not True. to set us back, but to tell us how to move forward. Because if this didn't right. work, then we're not going to do that again. And so, yeah, right when we unwind all of these things and we, we can really hone in our focus, we can get to our goals, not necessarily faster, but more successfully. True. No, that's, you've given me a lot of things to think about today. And I, 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 that is very awesome. <laughs> I like that. So, Hey, that's always good. I mean, thinking's always good. So yeah. um, now I guess, um, yeah, I just, I knew this would be a great podcast. I love talking to you. Thank you for being the guest. <laughs> so, uh, so Amanda, um, so what's next? I mean, we talk about your podcast and your books and um, what is, I mean, we did five years down the line. It's still something else you want to do. I mean, how can people find you if they wanted to, can they work with you or could, would you have your thought about doing coaching? Or do you do coaching? I do. I offer coaching. So I have a couple of different levels that I work with people. I do locally. I host, you know, small workshops, um, you know, beginning of the year, goal setting okay. for new year, things like that. Right. Um, and I do guests at retreats, things like that. And I offer mentorship. I do one-to-one. -one. I don't do a okay. lot of those. They're, and I kind of go through a screening just to make sure that um, cause I, I want to get you to where you need to be and right. not drag it out. I'm not one of those coaches that's going to take you on a 10 year journey. Right. Right. Like yep. we're going to work on something very specific. We're going to put a time, time on it. If we need to stretch it, we can, but I truly want to help people get from point A to point B. If I need to help them cool. get to C, we'll do that. But right, right. one to one. And it's customized. So I do a customized program for people. And it it's really anyone that's going through a transition. I'm I market to women, um, but I'm I'm open to to work with anyone that okay. is willing to be committed to the process. And awesome. it's we can meet Zoom or over the phone, okay. however. But yeah, we I tailor it to what it is that you need to work on. And we just go awesome. through and I help you get to where you need to be. So a lot of people that I work with are going through career transitions, right. um, relationship transitions, and sometimes with new moms that are just trying to find that balance yeah. and stability. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, I mean, if somebody wanted to work with you, how could they find you to, to, to contact you? So my website is amandaewers.com. Um, I'm on Facebook. Instagram is ALK. 0211. Um, okay. So any of those places you can find me. My website has a bunch of different ways to get in touch with me. Okay. And 
Yeah. So I, I offer a one hour complimentary session to just kind of go through and see if I can okay. offer you a couple of tips to move forward. And, you know, if we, if we find that there's a little bit more that we could work on together, then we can talk about that too. But yeah, I love to offer that to people just to, you know, maybe get some, jog some ideas for you. So exactly. Yeah, and sometimes it's just, yeah, it's all, sometimes it's what it needs to be done, you know, to get you over to the next step there. So that is right. so cool. And um, so when do you sleep? <laughs> 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 I actually, I actually have a, a pretty good regimen that I do. I, I carve out time yeah, okay. um, to be with my family and I carve out time for my good. sleep. Um, and that that's really important. And I, I help teach people how yes. to do that. Mm -hmm. Really? Okay. With yeah. the sleep. And I, that is, I would agree because so many people dismiss sleep as not that important. You know, mm -hmm. they just like, well, I'll sleep when I'm dead or something like that. You know, the saying, and it's just like, well, you're probably going to be there sooner if you, I don't know how you would function if you didn't get enough sleep. So, um, so definitely I'm glad you're doing that. So you were yes. going to say something. The sleep is when your body is healing and sleep is when you're allowing your brain to rest. And if we're not giving that to our body, then how, how are we truly producing quality content? How are we producing Ooh quality relationships, quality, anything, yep. if we're not taking care of our central system. Very true. Yeah. I a hundred percent agree, but you just hear so many people out there that they, they kind of dismiss sleep as not important. And it's just like, but they, they're the ones which triggers me that they need to grind. And, um, that that's not me. The only time I want to no. have something ground is coffee. You know, it's just like, <laughs> Yes. Yeah. It's like, I, I don't grind. I mean, I, I, I just can't, I cannot put anything I do to the word grind. You know, it's just like, it just seems destructive. You know, it doesn't seem productive. Or, I don't know. It doesn't seem like the way you should be living your life. So I'll get that in my soapbox there. It just, um, but I have a lot of people that say, so what do you do? You know what, you know, it's just like, and then it's like, so what do you work and what do you play? It's like, it's the same, <laughs> you know, it doesn't, there's really not a difference. It's one and the same. And, um, but, but no, I'm glad you're discussing sleep too, because that is so, so dismissed in this, in this, in this country, especially. So, um, there are five, there are five key things that I teach all of my clients. So I'm going to give okay. you guys a freebie. Anybody's listening. Here's a freebie okay. for you. Okay. Um, awesome. Thank you. Since I do a lot with, with postpartum, uh, this works with, with anybody, anybody that's grieving, anybody that's um, going through postpartum, anybody that's just trying to take care of themselves. Right. There are five things that we need to do for ourselves every single day. So I call them the nests, N-E-S-T-S. -S. Okay. So think of, you know, your, your bird's nest right. and you got to, right. you got to exactly. take care right? Yeah. So we've got our nutrition because if we're feeding our body crap, we're going to feel like crap. And we know yeah. that from Italy, the food was amazing. Oh, it was. And it was so good up there. I, I haven't, do you know, I haven't had an energy drink since Italy. Awesome. I was no. drinking two a day before I left. Wow. And I went to Italy. I, I ate real food for an entire week and I, I've come home and there are just things that my body can't, I, yeah. I just, I can't do that to my body, you know? Right. So I hear you. Nutri nutrition is, you, you just, you gotta, you gotta eat the stuff that makes you feel good. And so I'm like, you if do. blueberries make you feel good, eat blueberries, you know? Exactly. So, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yep. And then exercise. Look, I'm not telling you to go out and do insanity, but I am telling you that you can't sit on the couch for 12 hours and then you can't sit at a desk for eight hours. Right. Your body has to stay in motion. A body in motion stays in motion. You need to yes. lubricate the joints. You need to you go do. out and walk. If you can't yes. get up out of the chair without being in pain, if you fall, how are you going to get yourself off the floor? Exactly. We're talking about functional living. You don't ever want to have to depend on another person. So you need to be able to get yourself up off the floor. That's why we do planks yep. to work on our core. We do sit up so we can right. pull ourselves up. These are just 
basic movements, just move your body, just lubricate your joints, go walk, go up and down the stairs a couple of times, park a little further away, Yes, just move 20 minutes a day, Yeah, you know, try to get your heart rate up a little bit, do some jogs. I don't know. Just move your body. Um, I agree. Yes. I agree. Yes. Yeah. We got sleep. We talked about that. So I won't go into that more. Um, Time for yourself. Look, it's not selfish to say mama needs a break. It's not selfish to Mm -hmm. say, hey, um, I enjoy spending all of my time with you, sweetheart, but um, I want some time by myself. There's nothing to feel guilty about. We are. We spend the most time with ourselves. Yep. We have to enjoy the time that we spend with ourselves yeah. to be able to enjoy the time that we spend with others. You got to fill up your right. cup. You do. So, yeah, you can't. And that, yeah, and that's how you know who, who you are and what you enjoy doing by spending time yep. by yourself. Yes. Um, and the last thing is support. You, you got to have okay. a hype squad. You got to have the people in your life that are going to lift you up when you're feeling down. Yep. You got to have somebody in your life that's going to tell you like it is so that you don't have a continuous pity party for yourself. Who's True. not going to let you fail on purpose. Yeah. You, you, you got to have, you got to have a squad. Um, you do. And I, I yep. don't, I don't mean a pep rally, anything like that, but you, you just, you got to have those people in your life that are, that you can talk to, that you can trust. And if you can't get yourself on the floor, that they'll offer a hand. Yes. So. Yes. It's very, very important. Yeah. I mean, I feel for people that don't have, you know, mm-hmm. it's got to be very tough to go through life because we all have those times where, mm-hmm. you know, but we need the support. That's for sure. So no. Okay. Yes. I got another thing I'm going to remember. So thank you. Uh, so cool. So Amanda, anything else you would like to share with the audience today? Um, I just really want people to embrace the idea that it's okay to put yourself first yes. and not we want we give where a lot of people are giving so much that they don't have anything left and they're really putting themselves last and yep. especially moms especially moms yes yes and i'm not talking about an hour every day to go get your nails done or this or that, but to just sit for 15 minutes in a book. If you are, if you're a person of faith to, to spend, spend time with the word. Um, if you are someone who just loves nature, go put your feet in the grass or your toes in the sand. Yep. You have to put on your oxygen mask first. You truly do. There's a reason why they say that. Yep. And celebrate the small stuff because it'll make you, it'll make you appreciate the big stuff even more. It will. I love that. And it's so true. So thank you. I love that. And on that, um, we'll end there. And um, Amanda, thank you for being my guest today on the Dreamcatcher podcast. Um, Maybe down the line, have have a come back for a follow up podcast if you would be interested in doing that. So sure. anytime, that, that that would be awesome. So, and um, if I would ever fit on your podcast, I would love to be your guest. I would I, I would love that too. So if I would ever fit, I mean, if there's a place that I <laughs> that would make sense being in your podcast, whatever. So, but um, of course. So so well, thank you, Amanda. And on that, um, thanks again for being our guest and have a good rest of your day. And thanks for, thanks for being there. Thank you so much. Yep. Thank you. Bye.